Hello, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Good. Awesome. We're camping in here. Cool. Awesome. Two, Lisa Harden, same last name. Great. That all looks great. And this is site number one. You can see we're kind of secluded. There's no one on this side of us. That's the camp post down there on the left. And then we have the big rock formation behind us. There's no electricity here, so there's generator hours. Do you have your hands up under here? I slipped up behind my... <laughs> but we're in our fifth week of camping, living in this little 10 by 10 unit. And, and that one has a little hole too. They say there's more than 2,000 named arches throughout this park. You can see Balance Rock up here in the uh, foreground. This is the, the fifth and last of the national parks that we'll be visiting in Utah. We've been to Zion, Canyonlands, Bryce, Arches, and Capitol Reef. And it is true what they say, every park is unique and different. Coming in and out of Arches National Park requires you to go through a series of switchbacks. We're standing in the parking lot at the visitor center and you can see this road that goes up to the park. So here, here's a map of Arches National Park and you can see the visitor center right here and then you have to go all the way through the park all the way up to here here's Devil's Garden Trailhead and here's the campground so the campground is at the very back end of the park this is very well done in here the ripple marks I am interested to see what causes the blue in the mountains that we've been seeing. And these are some fossils. This could be it. Volcanic ash that settled into a large alkaline lake. Which I find that interesting because I just got finished reading three books about um, women pioneers um, settling out west. And the alkaline waters killed many of their cattle something interesting the black streaks that we've been seeing on the rocks I've been taking quite a few pictures of them because it's so fascinating is actually manganese and iron this is the arches bookstore so this little fellow here is called the grasshopper mouse and he eats scorpions by biting their venomous tail off and then eating them head first and he also roars so this tree is actually a juniper tree and it's the most common tree in the park. We've seen several of those. I think there's even one or two at our campsite. Here's a couple of little statues of these ravens that are so predominant around these, these parks. We also saw one of these big lizards yesterday in our campsite. So we are leaving Devil's Campground this morning and we're gonna go down uh, Utah's Highway 128, which meanders along the Colorado River. It's a scenic highway. Oh, right outside Arches National Park is this campground called Goose Island Campground, and it is right on the Colorado River. And all the research that I did of this area, I never saw anything about this Goose Island Campground. So something that you might want to check out, but it's very close to the entrance of Arches and very close to Moab. Now here's another campground right along the river called Grand Staff Campground. You can park right on the river. I think that could be BLM camping. I'm not sure. So from end to end, the scenic Byway 128 is 33 and a half miles. I think we're going to drive the length of it. It's so pretty. This area over here is called Red Cliffs Ranch. Look at it. It's 
right on the Colorado River. Oh, we're gonna drive in. Ooh, I bet this restaurant's pretty nice. Sure, we're getting here. So here is this little ranch villa just outside of Moab, just outside of Arches National Park and very close to Canyonlands. The smell is amazing. So they have a fine little all-you-can-eat burger bar up there and it's, I think, $20 a person. You can sit and overlook this beautiful river. So we just finished our lunch. It was delicious. We sat right there on the deck. Look at this old wagon. Check out this view. So this uh, is as far up 128 as we're going to go. This is Hiddle Bottom Campground. This looks like another BLM campground. Is that a is that a blue heron? Kind of surprised to see those here. Okay. Okay, so look at this. Arches National Park. And it goes all the way up 128 and talks about all the campgrounds. So this is the sheet that you need to try to get if you want to camp along this river. And it seems to me that it'd be pretty easy to get a spot. Ida Gulch, Rocky Rapid. Wow. Oh, look at this little picnic area. Down this trail. What trail? Right it's so nice to be able to have the time to do this and go where we want to go. No rush to go anywhere. Those rafts didn't go across this part, did they? Fred is really the best one about exploring. He finds things that I would never have found. It has turned out to be a beautiful day. It's so much fun to get out of the crowds and come and do this. The Colorado River seems to just wrap its way around these national parks, through them and around them. The Green River will merge with the Colorado River there in the Canyonlands Park. Right, and so the, the, the Colorado River cuts through Canyonlands and divides Canyonlands into three sections. And then in Arches, the Colorado River actually, it wraps around the park, it borders, a, a, it. A borders it a couple of sides of it. We're gonna go down the LaSalle Loop Road. This is a back access into the LaSalle National Forest. We're gonna see how close it gets us to those mountains. Look at how close we've come to the base of these mountains. We're right at it. So straight ahead takes you to Gateway, Colorado, and right is LaSalle Loop Road.
Check this out. It looks like we're going up the side of this mountain. Oh my gosh, we are. Look at this. And we're continuing to go up. Okay, so right here, we are entering the National Forest. I thought we were already in the forest, but I guess not. And it's Manti La Sal National Forest. 14 day camping limit. And we are still going up. That's the road we just came from. Oh my gosh, look at that. And we're still going up. Fred says when, when there's snow and ice on the ground, he thinks this road is probably closed. Otherwise, you'd slide right off. Pinhook Battleground Site and Miner's Basin Trailhead. This is some kind of a viewpoint. Oh my, look how pretty this is. And we might be at the top here. So, getting out of the car, it's chilly up here. Oh my goodness. Whispering Oaks Ranch. Cedar Bend Cabin. I bet I bet that cabin's for rent. This little drive from this road that we've never heard of before and just decided to go down has been one of the prettiest drives that we've been on this whole trip. This is beautiful. You park there for free in the National Forest for up to 14 days. So we just saw a sign that said <coughs> Moab's 26 miles <coughs> away. And there's mountains all around us. We have fried pork chops, green beans, rice, and fresh sliced tomatoes for dinner tonight. So today we are driving to uh, Corona Arch. It's a three mile trail that's outside of Moab. We're at the Corona Arch Trailhead. It's a 1.5 miles in and then 1.5 miles back out. Uh, right now it looks like it could be straight up. We will see. But this is supposed to be a very popular hike um, right outside of Arches National Park. Maybe it took 15 minutes to get here. We followed the Colorado River, the opposite direction that we did yesterday. And actually there's a lot more camp spots in that direction so there are, there's camping all along the Colorado River really nice spots and then as you saw the petroglyphs a few minutes ago are just right outside of Arches National Park also I didn't even realize that till we drove past them there's the Colorado River down below us take a look at this train track how they had to uh, 
blasted through to build this. I wonder if this is part of the railroad that Colin Bohannon built on, on what was the name of that show? Hell on Wheels. Hell on Wheels. They built the railroad that uh, connected the east part of the United States to the west part of the United States. Transcontinental Railroad, I believe it was called. Check out this railroad. That is quite a feat of engineering. This really is a beautiful hike. If you want to get out of the National Park, this is a great hike to take. Fred thinks that this is one of the best trails we've been on yet. And we just got started. This is a great shot of the railroad in the Colorado River. Oh, we're pretty much straight up here. Whew. I was looking at our altitude last night in Arches National Park. We were around 5,500 feet. So I would imagine that we're probably 5,500 or 6,000 feet here. That could account for my very heavy breathing in addition to the straight uphill hike. <laughs> So the trail is very well marked with these blue blazes. We're headed to the Corona Arch, which is straight ahead this way. Look at how beautiful this is. The sun is really starting to come out today. Fred and I both have on shorts, thank goodness, because it's getting very warm as we come up over this little ridge. Look at that big cave. Here's a little bird. So here is the Corona Arch. We we see it this time. It's quite large. Look at that. That's something else, isn't it? There's another little hole that's coming up through there. You see that? Well, we believe that we have seen enough of Corona Arch from this point right here. We are going to reverse course. Look, there, there's a little piece of rock art right up here. A little it's, round piece? Yeah, it's a little alien head. You see it? Yes, With the do. antennas? Yes, I do. Lucy's a little tired now. Come on, Lucy. Come on, baby. Let's go, Lucy. Come on, let's go, let's go. You know, I think I mentioned, but one of the reasons why we wanted to do this trail, come on, Lucy, come on, is because they allow dogs. In the National Park, they don't allow dogs. Um, the trails, if there are any trails that allow dogs, it's very limited to you know, just paved sidewalks. Um, and in Arches National Park, where we're staying now, there are no trails that allow dogs. Come on, Lucy. Come on, baby. Come on. What was it? See where those people are way up there? Yeah. That's where they're at. You know, walk up that steep switch. Oh my back. God, you're kidding me. So I say no. It's up to you. What do you want to do? I don't want to walk way up there. There's dinosaur tracks way up there. You can see the people, but we just did the one trail. We're not walking up there. I would like to see dinosaur tracks. What did it say on that sign? Basically, you have a quarter mile steep 
incline trail with switchbacks up to the uh, dinosaur tracks. Apparently there are two tracks up there and some, and, uh, some more petroglyphs. Oh, really? I'll see if I can find a picture of it online. Now that's what you have to climb up to get to those dinosaur tracks. It wouldn't be so bad had we just not walked to Corona Arch, but. So look at the people rock climbing. They're all along this road, climbing up these dang slick rock cliffs. Unbelievable. And then right over here is a beautiful Colorado River. So now we're gonna check out Panorama Point. This is along the main road of Arches National Park. We were seeing prettier panorama views up on the top of the LaSalle Mountains yesterday. But here we go. Okay, so they have a little restroom area up here and some picnic areas, which are pretty nice. And then let's take this panorama shot. See what this is about pretty over there. That almost looks like Bryce, but I know it's not. Well, there you go. Panorama Point. And the LaSalle Mountains back over there again. Well, this is the way to Sand Dune Arch. To the right, Broken Arch is to the left. Slippery. It's a little bit further than what I thought. All right. So this is it. Seems like we came at the wrong time. We just came back to our campsite and we're ready for a break. So after an exhausting day, this ham and cheese sandwich looks pretty good. In the Arches National Park gift shop, they had this little basket kit that Fred bought for me for $30. I'm gonna sit here this afternoon and relax and see if I can't figure out how to make a basket like the Indians did. Well, we're riding through the Devil's Campground right now. Let me show you some of the different campground spots. That's 30 right there where the van is. 31. Private site 47 and probably 48. That's a group campsite right there. Here's 48. 
side has a nice view. 21. 20 has a nice view. 18, nice view. 17. 15. 14. 13 is this loop. Okay, so this is the famous balanced rock. Here's another view of balanced rock from the other side. So in Moab, there's this restaurant called Sunset Grill. That's it at the top of that hill. And it overlooks Moab. We saw it one night, it was all lit up. It was very pretty. We're gonna go check this out for lunch. Well, we might have to come back here because it's only open nightly at 5 p.m. But this looks like a really cool place to eat. So at the corner of Main Street and another side street here in downtown Moab, there's this place called Zach's. It always looks like it's pretty busy and it's quite large. We're going to go check this out today for lunch. So Fred got a burger and fries and I got the Italian Stallion personal pizza. Looks pretty good. So this is the Delicate Arch viewpoint trails. There are three. There's one to the lower viewpoint, which is uh, just right over here. There's one to the upper viewpoint, which is a half a mile and it's fairly strenuous. And then there's one that's three miles. And that's the Delicate Arch Trail. So right now we are going to this short one that's the lower viewpoint. This one is pretty much right at the parking lot. A handicapped person could get to this one very easily. You certainly can't tell it from here, but this arch is 45 feet high and 33 feet wide. The placard here says that this majestic arch stands as an iconic feature of the American West. Okay, so now we're going to go to the upper viewpoint, which is half a mile and supposedly somewhat moderately strenuous. Look, this blue color comes all the way up here. It's like it's being washed down off these hills. Yeah. Is that the, like an alkaline substance? Not sure. Oh, we're still walking on this half a mile trail and so far it's pretty flat and hard packed. All right, so we're starting to go uphill a little bit now. Yeah, I guess we go right up there. Not sure if the video can capture the steepness of that, but it's pretty daggone steep. Now we go up there. You can see how far down we've, how far up we've come. Look at this rock. On the inside of it, it's real slick. I think this is like that rock I saw in the visitor center yesterday. Well, we've walked up quite a ways. And it keeps going up here. But I think, oh, I see the arch from here. You can see it. All right, so this is the upper viewpoint looking at delicate arch. It's a, a pretty good hike to get up here to get this view. So I might say skip this hike and just go for the three mile hike and go straight to it. That's the Garden of Eden viewpoint. Very pretty over there. same viewpoint just a little bit further down you can see the LaSalle Mountains again in the background that's the 
Garden of Eden viewpoint. That's where we just went, right? We are packed up and we are leaving Arches National Park. We've been here in campsite number one for five nights. We are ready to go. Our next uh, park is Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado and then we are headed home. So please be sure you watch and, and thank you for sticking with us this long. Bye-bye.